exciting today because we're finally going to look at how we actually use oxidation reduction reactions to power um, what we call a voltaic cell. Um, so you have this very complex looking diagram and this is actually a battery. So this is what you guys will be building in the lab. Um, and all batteries run off of this this idea that we can get energy from electrons. And so that electrochemical process is essentially just the ability to generate energy through electrons. And so we have this whole little system set up and it looks pretty complicated, but it's, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through the different components and we'll talk about the step-by-step -step for how this cell actually works. So we're gonna start off over here at your cathode. If you think about like cation, um, this tends to be what we think about as the more positive part. Um, so the cathode is where the reduction is occurring. So your cathode is where your reduction occurs. Your anode is where your oxidation occurs. And I remember that because they're both vowels, so anode, oxidation. What happens is that at your anode, we lose electrons and those go over to the cathode and that's gonna start that reaction. So your anode is where oxidation takes place. Your cathode is where reduction takes place. Remember that these two processes work with each other, right? So they want to exchange electrons. In oxidation, we're losing electrons. In reduction, we're gaining electrons. And so we have to have some way of keeping this flow of electrons going if we're going to have a battery, if we're going to have something that generates energy. So there are two things that kind of help us do that. One, we have this wire connecting my two electrodes. Remember that electrodes are just the pieces of metal. Sorry, I haven't been giving you the definitions. Um, so cathode reduction occurs, oxidation occurs, the anode, we lose electrons and they go to the cathode. The salt bridge is a really important component. It keeps the solutions that your electrodes are in um, basically in an ionized state. Um, so you need ions, you need, the f you need ions to be free flowing, right? Ions charge particles, so they're losing or gaining electrons. And so we need those to stay, um, we need them to stay dissociated in the water. So you'll actually have a solution in here that has some sort of copper in it if this is your, if this is your electrode is copper. What I'm saying is that if this metal that you put into your solution happens to be copper, then the solution that it goes into also needs to have copper in it. Okay, so same thing over here. This metal I've chose over here is silver, and so my solution also has to have silver in it. Okay, so the salt bridge helps keep things balanced and neutral. It's gonna keep my ions flowing back and forth. The electrodes, just the pieces of metal, and remember those have to be connected by a wire. And then the last part up here is your voltometer. So volts, electricity, it's our way of measuring how much electricity we're actually generating in this cell. And so this is gonna be your measure of success in the lab. You'll have this whole setup. Um, you'll have a salt bridge, two different electrodes. Um, you'll have it set up so you have your anode um, flowing, giving electrons to the cathode. Um, and then you'll be able to figure out how much energy that cell is producing. So voltaic cell works in four steps. So we're gonna start off with the first step. Oxidation starts at the anode and it has to occur spontaneously. It has to occur without me giving any energy to that. Okay, so oxidation is going to start at the anode spontaneously. Those electrons will flow through the wire to the cathode. So we go from A to C, anode to cathode. Because of those electrons flowing into my cathode, that's gonna start the reaction of, of a reduction. And so that reduction allows for the continued electron exchange. That's really important. So because my energy flows from the anode over here to the cathode, this part doesn't take any energy. This is spontaneous. Here my electrons are coming in and they start this reduction on this side, which allows for my continued exchange of electrons. And then the final step is that those electrons, or the final idea, I guess, is that those electrons will generate electricity for us. So this is a voltaic cell. It looks kind of complicated, but just remember oxidation at the anode. Those electrons flow to the cathode. Uh, reduction happens at the cathode, and then this whole process just kind of keeps going where the electrons are flowing back and forth, and that's how I get energy. 
right? Make sure you write any questions that you have over here in the margin. We're going to kind of talk about this in class tomorrow.